All right, we're here at my Vermin Hut indoor worm bin, and I'm very excited because today is harvest day and rotation day. So right here is our very lowest tray. It is a new inoculating tray that we had put all kinds of dry sh shredded cardboard in, and we're gonna check and see what's underneath. So let's look. So after 40 days, you can see there's very little of anything here. We've got three worms, and let's look under at the basin. And the basin is almost completely dry. It looks like we have one, two dry worms, possibly a third right there. So the worms do not, in general, come down here because they have to go through all that dry bedding to get here. So let's go ahead and get these three worms back into a tray and continue. So back goes on our M board, which is to prevent castings and worms and stuff like that from getting down into the basin. And now I'll throw our new inoculating tray back on top here. Now this tray has been here for 40 days, so let's see how dry it is underneath. It went in completely dry, and you can see there's some castings and it is wet right on top. And there is a little bit of dry bedding, but there's also a lot of wet bedding. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kind of agitate it. And yeah, right there, you can see it is very dry. So the very few worms that try to get down there, usually will kind of sense that it's dry and come right back up. And I love using a dry inoculating tray on bottom because if I didn't, there would be tons of worms and tons of casting down there. So the way I rotate things is a little odd and different from the way that the Vermihut directions tell you to do it. But I have found that it is extremely effective and really helps to get the trays ready to go when I'm ready to feed them. So let me continue to do this and aerate, and then we'll start with our next tray. So we are gonna go from a four tray system to a three tray system for just a couple weeks until I get more shred cardboard to fill in another tray and create a new inoculating tray. But I love these inoculating trays because without any work, they are getting full of microbes and liquid. But right now, what we're gonna do is we are gonna put on the old top feeding tray and set it right on top of this. And it is going to become the pre-harvest tray or the tray that we are gonna harvest next in about 60 days. So here is the new pre-harvest tray. Now this is the tray that you're most familiar with because it's the one that we've been feeding for about the last 67 days or so. And it has been on the system for a total of 191 days because it spent time as a new inoculating tray and as an old inoculating tray. And the last time we were in here, we fed, I think, some of our Urban Legend food. And there was a potato in here. I just kind of wanted to see if they had eaten. I imagine they did. And you can see just how great castings we have in here with just a little bit of cardboard. And for the next 60 days, they're going to go ahead and forage through this and really eat everything else that was in here. And this right here is an avocado shell. And I bet you it's got some worms in it, and it sure does right there. There's another piece of avocado shell. I'm going to go ahead and put these in what is going to become the new top feeding tray. So I'm still not seeing that potato. I think they ate it all up, and here's another avocado shell. In 60 days, we're going to have about 10 pounds of castings from this tray alone. I think it only got about five feedings total. And that just kind of shows you how well having those inoculating trays underneath does for the bins. Here is that little piece of pumpkin that we had been seeing all that time. I'm going to put that aside too. But yeah, by just kind of storing those trays underneath with dry bedding that kind of gets wet, it really makes the feeding portion go super quick with the worms. And I'm not seeing that potato at all. So we're just going to go ahead and flatten this out and we're going to get it prepared to put the next tray on top. And the next tray that goes on top is going to be the oldest inoculating tray that is now going to become the top feeding tray. So here we go. Here is the new top feeding tray. So this is the tray we're going to spend the most time with. It was the old inoculating tray and it had been on there for 132 days. And now it's going to become our top new top feeding tray, and we're gonna put this paper on it at the end. So when it first went on the system, it went in here with just dry cardboard shreds, and it spent all that time absorbing water and getting inoculated, and you can see, without ever being fed food scraps, the worms are down here, and they are already loving it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna agitate it first, and then we're gonna go ahead and feed it. So let's go ahead and get all of this, and look at that, it's just like, it is completely damp and it already has castings in it. 
So let me go ahead and aerate it and fluff it up. Now in some worm towers, people will put spacers on the corners to try and give a little bit of space so that things don't get compacted and to allow the worms to get in here more freely. But you can see with this vermi hut, it tapers in a little bit and it's got 1600 holes in the bottom of each tray. So I don't find that the worms, you know, really need those spacers, but you can certainly give it a try. Just tons of worms in here already. Mm -hmm. They are gonna be really excited when they get fed. Right here, I found a cocoon. So you can see they're down here doing their business and making more worms for me. That is fantastic. So you can see it fluffed up pretty high for me, which is great. We're gonna add more bedding. Now I run this system with four trays on it, and that gives me about 10 pounds of castings every 60 days. But my vermi hunt came with five, so if there's anybody that runs their system with five, I'd really like to hear about that. Go ahead and throw it in the comments, how you run your system, and how often you're able to harvest in your vermi hut. So the first thing I like to do every time I feed is add more bedding in. And this is just dry bedding straight in here because we're gonna put a lot of food on top and that is gonna add moisture to this bin. And these sections over here are really moist, just absolutely perfect. The vermi hut is run in such a way that your moisture level is absolutely perfect at all times. So here's what we had in mind to feed. We've got about five to 6,000 worms in here. So this is gonna be a pretty big feeding that you're gonna see compared to if you kind of got a brand new bin and it only has, you know, like a thousand worms or 5,000 worms. Looks like we've got a lot of lettuce, some strawberry tops. We've even got some chickpeas in here. And this lettuce is gonna go super quick and so are these strawberries. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit more. Now that banana peel is gonna take longer. It'll probably be in there for about three weeks. And some more of that. And then I'm just gonna hunt and peck through here and see what else I wanna give. Probably not all these banana peels. We'll throw in a little bit of tangerine peel, which some people think you shouldn't put in, but I've dispelled that in a Wurban Legend video. Then we'll throw in some raspberries, and then I've got some carrot tops, and I think a broccoli stem in here, and one more banana peel. So I think this is going to be a really good feeding for them and will attract the worms from down below to come up to here. So next we're going to put in some amendments and this is worm chow, which is just some dry expired food stuff from my pantry. And it looks like we don't have much left in it, so I'm just gonna give it all to the worms and we'll make some more worm chow later. Next, we're gonna go in with some used coffee and tea grounds. Again, it's just another food source for them and helps me get rid of my coffee grounds instead of throwing them into the garbage. And then finally, we'll add some grit. This is just pulverized eggshells, another opportunity for me to skip throwing things in the garbage and help out my garden and my worms. And my face is pretty far away from here. Just make sure you're not breathing this stuff in. So the worms use that grit in their gizzards where they help make some of this food smaller so they can digest it. And I forgot to put the avocado shells in there, so I'll just shove them under there. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I harvest worms out of that harvest bin. So it's got lots of castings in there, and what we wanna try and do is separate the worms from the castings. So I'm gonna show you how I do that real quick here. So this right here is the tray that we are going to harvest. So this tray, while it had been on the stack, was called the pre-harvest tray because it's the one that we were going to harvest next. And that's what we're doing now is harvesting it. So it has been on the system for 249 days, but it's been on the system for 145 days as the feeding tray or the harvest tray or pre-harvest tray. So this looks like a piece of corn that is just going to take forever. So we'll put that back in one of the lower trays. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just agitating the castings. What I'm doing is letting the worms know that, hey, go somewhere else because this is not where you want to be. And what they're going to end up doing is go down through all those holes that you see in the bottom. There's 1600 holes and I'll show you where they are real quick. That was just another piece of corn. But yeah, there you go, right there. You see all those holes? That's how the worms get in between the trays. And I think there's something else hard right over here. Let's see what this is. This is a mango seed, so same thing. We're just gonna set this to the side as well. All right, so now that I've agitated for a couple minutes, we're just gonna let this bin sit still for about 15 minutes and the worms are gonna start going down. And then what I'll do is I'll take some castings off, agitate it again, and then let the worms come down. And then I'll keep repeating that until basically I have all the castings out where all the worms are gone. And I found that to be the fastest way to do it. Really, it's about three to four minutes of me agitating and then 
15 minutes plus 15 minutes plus 15 minutes of the worms doing all the work. Now, I do want to mention something. This right here is like skin from some kind of vegetable or possibly from Amazon tape. I had put some Amazon tape through my shredder and I am seeing some of this blue stuff right here. I've since stopped doing that because Sandra over at Nana's Worm and Garden has shown that that Amazon tape really isn't something you want to put in your bin. In fact, those strings don't get digested at all. I think she's continuing the experiment in a hot compost pile, but the worms did not eat them. So when these dry out, I'll probably sift them to try and get some of this blue Amazon tape stuff out of it. So let's go ahead and let this rest and then we'll come back and agitate again. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes and we're gonna take our cocoon nursery here and we are just gonna kind of skim off the top and throw it in there. I keep doing this until I start to see worms. For the most part, all the worms are out of these castings that I'm putting in the cocoon nursery. So let's just finish agitating and then we will be set up for another 15 minute rest period for them. All right, so it's been another 15 minutes, so we're just gonna go ahead and scrape off the top layer that is free of worms, and I will be right back. All right, we're starting to hit worms, so I think we're gonna be done here, and we are really close to the bottom. All the remaining worms will probably go down in the next agitation. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this off right now and I'm gonna take all these worms that are in here and I'm gonna put them in my urban worm bag. So let's go ahead and go down to our top feeding tray layer again. So you can see a lot of the worms that crawled down out of that harvest tray into this top feeding tray here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put down some of the bigger pieces that we had in our harvest tray and I will set them here so that the worms can continue to work on them. Then I'll put in some bedding right here just to kind of cover it up. And any moisture that is in the system is just going to kind of permeate into this dry bedding here and get it just a little bit damp. And then the next time we feed, we'll just go ahead and mix it in. So let's go ahead and put our top newspaper back on to our new top feeding tray. Right now, the system has three trays on it. It's got an inoculating tray, it's got a new pre-harvest tray, and it's got this new top feeding tray. For the next 60 days, this is the tray we're going to be feeding. So I hope you've enjoyed the harvest and rotation of this vermi hut. I hope you're having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing great. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.